Hello everyone, welcome to the data science training provided by Great Online Training. So according to various sources, data scientist is one of the sexiest jobs of the 21st century. And hence, to guide you in this, Great Online Training has come up with this, with this course along with uh, many other courses in machine learning and big data. So please do subscribe to our channel below for the latest updates in the data science field. First, let me tell you about myself. Uh, my name is Pranay. I have uh, experience of around five years or so. I have worked as a data scientist with uh, companies like Amazon and Deloitte. Uh, I have worked in uh, fraud analytics, APIs, health sectors, as well as uh, social media analytics. And I'm associated with uh, great online training since past few years uh, working in the data science space. So quickly moving ahead uh, to the agenda. So the points what I'll be covering uh, in this presentation specifically is uh, I'll be talking, I'll be giving an introduction to data science, what exactly a data scientist is, the data science, uh, the data scientist framework. So what, what kind of a job a data scientist does in, for an organization, introduction to data, data sampling, center and uh, spread of data. So introduction to data is again uh, talking about the basic uh, types of variables and what exactly are numerical variables and categorical variables. These are some things which will be covered in the introduction to data. Data sampling is nothing about talking about uh, sampling techniques like uh, stratified sampling, simple random sampling or uh, clustering of samples. And uh, then uh, we'll be talking about center and spread of data. So that is nothing but covering uh, various uh, concepts like histograms, box plots, and scatter plots. At the end, we'll be talking about some hands-on programming uh, on R. Uh, we'll be talking about how the R interface is. So with this, uh, moving ahead, what exactly, uh, what is a data scientist? So everyone has this doubt uh, right now of what exactly a data scientist is and um, they actually want to know what sort of a combination um, uh, yields to becoming a data scientist. So according to me, uh, a data scientist is someone who works, who knows uh, mathematics and statistics, which allows them to identify interesting insights in a sea of data. They also have programming skills to code up models and get data from a variety of different data sources. So, so what basically this definition tells is uh, someone having a background of mathematics, someone knowing about having good grasp on things like calculus, algebra, and then uh, apart from that having, having good knowledge of statistics and with these two, with these two skill sets, uh, also having good programming skills, like he must have hands-on programming on R and Python. So to cover cover these things, uh, the Great Online Training has uh, come up uh, come up with this uh, data science course. So in this course, uh, I'm sure after after the completion of this course, uh, you guys will be having, you will be able to know. Uh, uh, quite a lot of questions are uh, related to the data science field and uh, you would be able to enhance your skill sets uh, with respect to a data scientist. So as I as I mentioned before what exactly a data scientist does in his in his day-to-day -day job. So that is nothing but uh, getting the data from the real world. Uh, that is nothing but the raw data and then processing it to a data frame. So uh, once once this process is done, uh, we, the, a data scientist is expected to create statistical models and machine learning predictions. So uh, statistical models are uh, nothing but uh, doing um, ANOVA or chi-square analysis, regression analysis, and uh, machine learning predictions is nothing but uh, doing supervised learning as well as uh, unsupervised learning. So these are these are two two blocks which a data scientist uh, needs to have a sound knowledge upon. So after this, the end result being uh, coming up with data-driven products, 
it's either from a statistical model or uh, using a machine learning prediction and uh, of course coming up with uh, reports visualizations etc so just to give you more insight on what exactly is happening uh, in this uh, particular uh, frame so here is the raw data processing and then creating a data frame at this point of stage this is basically uh, one of the key and foundation lay uh, uh, lay down to a data scientist so what exactly happens here is um, uh, a data scientist must have uh, some good knowledge on uh, SQL I'm sorry uh, um, if, if at all uh, my typing is a little weird here uh, he should have good knowledge on SQL must have good understanding on SAS all right I, th I think I will stop doing this <laughs> so he must have good knowledge on SQL and SAS and uh, and the other things being once once uh, this particular stage of uh, SQL and SAS and getting into a, getting uh, the data to uh, say a typical columns and rows uh, that is into a data frame then he goes on to create either machine learning predictions and uh, statistical models so from from these again uh, so if you see the top right corner the data driven products so this a good example for a data driven product is nothing but the Google self-drive car that is that is one of the creations of uh, uh, from the machine learning uh, supervised uh, methods and then uh, the reports visualization and blogs so this uh, at this stage this is nothing but having good skill sets uh, in things like uh, uh, Tableau, which is which is one of the which one of the good uh, data visualization tools, which we'll be talking about in this course. We have uh, we'll be having a hands-on session on Tableau, wherein we'll be dealing with uh, many of the Tableau concepts. Uh, and apart from Tableau, we have uh, ClickView, Spotfire, uh, and many more. Uh, these are few of the data visualization tools uh, which are right now uh, doing good in the market. So, so this is how it is uh, right from a data scientist framework is right from data coming from the real world so real data from the real world to a data frame again um, it covers a lot of topics like uh, the API's so uh, using the Facebook data or the Twitter data uh, that is for doing uh, social media analytics so uh, a lot of things get covered in in this specific region from raw data till a uh, data frame and then again um, the core uh, that is the uh, statistical models and machine learning predictions and uh, from there uh, it it goes on to uh, building data driven products and uh, uh, visualizations so uh, moving ahead uh, talking about uh, the data basics so in the data basics we'll be covering observations variables uh, data matrices types of variables and uh, relationship between variables so a data matrix so this is a typical uh, typical uh, data set I mean I'm sure you guys would have worked uh, on an Excel spreadsheet so the vertical columns are uh, nothing but uh, the variables and the horizontal ones are the observations so quickly moving ahead uh, to the types of variables so variables are being uh, classified into a numerical variable so the numerical variables are uh, nothing but the ones which take on uh, numerical values and are sensible to add subtract and take averages and the, the other one being uh, categorical variables so categorical variables take on limited number of distinct categories categories can be identified with number but not sensible to arithmetic operations so categorical variables I mean any variables which is say a name of a person or uh, any variable which is defined in uh, in characters and uh, which is not mathematically uh, computable so that sort of variables are uh, nothing but the categorical variables so again uh, talking about uh, numerical and categorical variables numerical variables are again broadly uh, divided into continuous variables and uh, discrete variables 
So uh, continuous variables, uh, for an for an example, uh, is the height of a person. So so a height of a person can be right from uh, five feet to five point five point five. Uh, 5 feet 5 inches so it can take in decimal points as well so that sort of uh, uh, a nature of variable is is a continuous variable and uh, a discrete variable is uh, something like count count of the data say how many cars uh, do you ho do you have or anything in anywhere where um, a, a count is a whole number occurs is is a discrete numerical variable So again, a categorical variable is divided into a regular categorical variable. A regular categorical variable, as I mentioned before, nothing but a name of a person or anything which has characters. And then again, uh, ordinal variable. So ordinal variable is um, it is explicitly used uh, when we conduct surveys. So say suppose if we are doing a survey for uh, customer satisfaction. So in that case, we have. Um, uh, options like uh, very very much satisfied, satisfied, less satisfied, or completely not satisfied. So that sort of a nature type of a variable is uh, it comes under ordinal variable. And and this particular slide, uh, I believe uh, it it's very important to understand the nature of the variable. So uh, if you have a data set, understanding what sort of what exactly the variable is, and then getting uh, that particular data set into any of the tools say R or Tableau or uh, Python you need to have this basic understanding of how what what the nature of variable is so uh, it's the same data set uh, which uh, I had mentioned before uh, which we'll be using here to identify what kind of variables are so name of the country is is again a categorical variable a number of content removal requests uh, made to Google. So these are nothing but a discrete numerical variables because we have uh, numbers here mentioned as whole numbers. Again, a percentage of content removal request uh, Google complied with is a continuous numerical variable. Number of user data requests as part of criminal investigation is a discrete. Uh, variable as it's in a whole number and then we have uh, the hemisphere hemisphere that the country located is is uh, again a categorical variable the human development index very high high medium low is a uh, ordinal variable so getting to know um, of what exactly the type of variable is uh, seeing the data set is very important and uh, it's it's one of the basic steps uh, in data modeling and uh, in in data science so l now let's talk about uh, data sampling so uh, data sampling is nothing but the process of selecting a small number of observations uh, to make a conclusion about the entire population is is nothing but uh, a data sampling so what exactly happens um, in in uh, data sampling is uh, will will look ahead in, in the next slides one of the one of the good examples uh, is this the soup example so um, what I'm, I'm sure uh, you all must have done cooking at any stage of your life so what what basically happen uh, is happens in this example is say so sampling is is quite a natural technique I mean we taste in other words we examine a small part of soup to see how does it taste at an overall level so when you taste a spoonful of soup and you decide that spoonful of soup isn't salty enough what you're doing is an exploratory analysis so if you then generalize and conclude that the entire soup needs salt uh, that is nothing but making an inference so for your inference to be valid the spoonful you tasted needs to be representative of your entire population so if the spoonful is coming from the for from the surface and the salt remains at the bottom then the representation is not correct on the other hand if you stir the soup thoroughly before you taste 
your spoonful is more likely to be a representative of the entire pot so so what basically we are trying to tell here is how exact how i mean even in a normal cooking uh, cooking of a soup technique stir the entire bowl properly and then take take a spoon that is a sample from it uh, you will get you will get the sense of the entire um, soup what exactly how exactly the salt is in the entire soup so basically your your sampling method should be should be uh, is very important um, when it comes to the analysis of data and uh, when it comes to uh, sampling techniques uh, uh, from the entire population so with this uh, we'll move ahead uh, to with the various sampling methods uh, simple random sampling um, every case is equally likely to be selected and easy to implement stratified sampling a mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive strata a random sample is drawn from each strata increases preci precision and this is a better representative of a population so we'll be talking about uh, these uh, these things in the coming slides cluster sampling each cluster is the sampling unit reduces the cost by increasing sampling efficiency each cluster is similar to one another so simple random sampling in a uh, simple random sampling we randomly select cases from the population such that each case is equally likely to be selected uh, this is similar to randomly drawing names from a hat so computationally what happens in a simple random sampling is if you see here in this picture we have uh, these are nothing but the data points of the entire population so so computationally if you if you feed the data into r and uh, and and then ask for a sample of say i want 20 20 people of the entire uh, population of people to be interviewed so what basically happens in um, uh, computationally that is back in the background of r is each and every data point is given a number and then randomly say if you have 20 samples to be collected randomly 20 different numbers are collected so that is nothing but a simple random sampling so moving ahead uh, stratified sampling so in stratified sampling we first divide the population into homogeneous groups called strata and then randomly sample from uh, within each stratum so what what happens in a stratified sampling is suppose um, in your in your organization there there is a new team to be formed and the new team should consist of a, a senior managers uh, senior managers and after that you have a uh, senior level associates mid level associates and then less experienced associates and freshers so let's just uh, let's just do that here actually so so this is basically a strata of senior managers okay i'm just highlighting it the second one being uh, senior level associates third one is mid level associates fourth one is associates with uh, around say 3 years of experience that is next to the mid level and then we have uh, the ones with one to two years of experience and these are nothing but the last one is nothing but freshers so we we want to form a team of these skill sets i mean these profiles are uh, having having a hierarchy right from uh, senior managers to the freshers so in in a simple random sampling the sample size is is say suppose if you we need six people so so from each and every strata one such people is being picked and then uh, and then according to it uh, a particular sample is made so 
uh, and it's the same thing written here as an example as well if we if we wanted to make sure both genders are equally represented in a study we might divide the population first into males and females and then randomly sample from within each group so in a similar way uh, just to give you a like a real world example this is what happens i mean um, you if you want to form a team you you try to pick people from uh, different groups and then uh, form a team so i hope uh, you are clear with uh, stratified sampling so next being uh, cluster sampling so in a cluster sampling um, what happens is randomly sample a few clusters and then and then from these few clusters we randomly uh, pick uh, within these clusters so this looks uh, similar to stratified sampling but the difference is that the groups called clusters are not necessarily homogeneous within themselves so in a so suppose uh, what happens uh, here is there is some sort of a natural grouping happening between the clusters so if suppose you want to pick pe few people from uh, different streets for uh, for interviews so here we have nine clusters so these are um, in with respect to my example these are nothing but nine different streets people living in nine different streets are again classified into clusters and then you just pick one specific cluster and and that is nothing but your sample so this is what happens uh, in a cluster sampling we it's a natural grouping happening between the clusters and then you just pick one of the clusters and and that becomes your sample all right so moving ahead uh, talking about visualizing numerical data scatter plots for paired data and other visualiz visualizations for describing uh, distributions of uh, numerical variables so this is what the example data which we'll be talking about that is we have uh, income per person and the life expectancy so scatter plots so what exactly how exactly a scatter plot looks is uh, this uh, right on your screen on the x axis we have the explanatory variable on the, and uh, the y axis has uh, the response variable so suppose um, in your organization someone asks you to visualize or uh, see what sort of a relationship is between the two numerical variables then this is the best uh, visualization technique uh, to to actually show um what what exactly happening is between the two uh, numeric variables so here if you see uh, we have uh, at the at the extreme uh, right upper corner we have qatar macau and Luxem luxembourg so these are few countries which are uh, which are ha which are pretty much wealthy so and hence uh, they they stand at the extreme right uh, upper corner being an outlier and if you see uh, on on the left upper corner we have nepal so nepal has a good life expectancy but the income per person level is low so one of the best ways to see what exactly the trend is uh, between the two uh, the explanatory and the response variable is to draw a line so if you see a, a pink color line drawn here uh, between your uh, between the scatter plot so you'll be able to identify what sort of uh, a relationship is happening between uh, the both these lines and again uh, i'll be i'll be talking more about what exactly correlation and uh, causation uh, correlation is not not causation uh, i'll be talking more about this uh, in our future uh, lectures and uh, computationally also will be will be seeing uh, what exactly the measure of uh, correlation is um, of doing it on uh, tools like r so evaluating the relationship uh, the direction uh, one of the ways is to see the direction the second being the shape uh, whether it is linear or curved and the third being the strength of relationship whether the the data points are strongly related or uh, or if the data points are uh, scattered that is nothing but a weak relation and uh, there is also a one more method 
one more thing in which um, seeing the outliers outliers uh, in evaluating the relationship apart from the direction shape and strength so now uh, so after covering scatter plots we are uh, now into seeing the other visualization technique that is the histograms so histograms it provides a view of the data density especially useful for describing the shape of the distribution so as you see in the graph uh, on the left side we we see the histograms of life expectancies we see a heavy um, heavy amount of uh, uh, data points between 70 to 80 so that's the reason why we have uh, the these huge blocks uh, at 70 to 80 and then we have uh, on the on the bottom we have income per person so so if we see this this data is uh, kind of right skewed that is having a long right tail so most of the income per person is uh, standing below below a certain level so getting further into uh, histograms we'll be talking about skewness so so the first one being left skewed so in a left skewed distribution the longer tail is on the left side that is on the negative end the second being asymmetric so in a symmetric distribution the skewness is said to be asymmetric and the third being the right skewed distribution uh, that uh, in this case we have the uh, tail longer tail is on the right side so so this is very important uh, when when we have to uh, see what exactly the the spread of data is how exactly the distribution of data is so in uh, so going further uh, into it in a left skewed distribution what happens is the mean of that particular variable is uh, less than the median and in a right skewed distribution the mean is uh, greater than the median so when we when we go ahead and so right now we are just covering uh, about the topics and um, what exactly the concepts is but once we move ahead and we get into the details uh, taking live examples and problems so I'll be talking about how how exactly do we visualize and analyze uh, uh, the particular variable the skewness of it and then um, with with the help of these uh, these uh, these basic things we uh, end up creating a, a good model altogether so again um, the uh, after after identifying the skewness the next next thing what we do is to see the modality so modality is nothing but trying to see the prominent peaks uh, d it determines the modality so if if suppose there is just one peak uh, in your uh, in that uh, specific histogram uh, of that particular variable then it is uh, said to be a unimodal if there are couple of uh, peaks then it is a bimodal if if there are no peak altogether so then it is said to be a uniform distribution and uh, otherwise if we have multiple peaks uh, it is a multimodal uh, distribution so the next visualization being the box plots so in box plots uh, it's 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 very useful for highlighting the outliers medians and the interquartile range so here if you see uh, we have the box plots um, so uh, the life expectancy box plot in which we have uh, the interquartile range uh, coming from somewhere around 65 to to somewhere uh, around 75 that is the interquartile range and the median being the 50th percentile of the, of the box plot which you see a, a, a broad a broad uh, black color line so below we see the income per person in this uh, as as we had seen in the scatter plots uh, we have uh, these outliers in the form of uh, countries like Qatar Macau and uh, Luxembourg so these are clearly identified in the box plots as well and uh, most of the data points are lying uh, 
below 20,000. So next uh, we'll be comparing histograms and the box plots. So if you see a uh, left skewed histogram and then uh, try to find um, uh, see what exactly the distribution is uh, with respect to the box plots at the bottom. So uh, let me just uh, tell you what exactly is happening here. So if you see uh, most of the data points in the in the histogram is is somewhere here and uh, and hence uh, that's the reason why we have the interquartile range uh, standing right below it when we see a, do a comparison between a histogram and a box plot and 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 in the histogram we have a long left uh, left tail and it's the same thing happening um, in the box plot as well So the next being a symmetric uh, distribution. So in a symmetric distribution, again, uh, we see a, a, a very symmetric uh, sort of a normal distribution. And uh, hence the box plot as well, the interquartile range being right at the between the histogram. And, and the outliers again, uh, we have uh, on, on, ex on the extreme left as well as on the extreme right, compensating each other. The uh, third one being uh, the right skewed distribution. So in a right skewed distribution, again, it's the same thing happening. We have uh, the most of the data points on the on the on the left hand side, and uh, that's the reason why the box plot, the interquartile range, is also uh, completely on the on the left side. So that's nothing but this. Uh, when when it comes to histogram and and the bottom one being uh, the interquartile range of the box plot being here and uh, the distribution is having a long right tail and it's the same thing uh, we can see in the in the histogram in the box plot as well so uh, Next, we have uh, measures of center. So it's it's very important to know uh, these concepts of what a mean is, what a median is, and a mode is. So mean is nothing but the arithmetic average. Uh, median is the midpoint of the distribution, and uh, mode is the most uh, frequent uh, observation. So again, uh, knowing these things are are good. I mean. You, you must know what uh, in, by definition why is uh, mean, median and mode. But the very important thing is where exactly we should be using mean, what sort of a data set we, um, is, is uh, a median is good instead of mean and wh why do we use mode uh, apart from uh, measures like mean and median. So that's, that's, that's very important. Uh, for us to uh, identify so as I said identifying the mean median and mode uh, becomes very important and uh, and and if we go on to see an example so here we have uh, nine student exam scores so the mean is nothing but taking the average of uh, these nine points and a mode is uh, as we, as we see in the definition the most frequent observation that is 88 we have it twice here and hence uh, the mode becoming uh, 88 and then we have median so median is uh, nothing but uh, take sorting the data from in an increasing order and then uh, taking the mid value of the entire data so here we have uh, nine nine data points so we are taking the fifth will be taking the fifth point so first second third fourth and fifth and if at all we have uh, say 10 data points even number in that case we take the the two midpoints uh, the sum of two midpoints and then again divided by two so if we have a 10th data point here we will be doing 87 plus 88 uh, divided by two that will be our median So again, uh, next thing being, so as I was talking about um, where to choose mean, median 
Uh, so this is what brings me to the next slide. Uh, we define robust statistics as uh, measures on which extreme observations have little effect. So, so here if we see, uh, we have uh, data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, mean is 3.5 and, and the median also is 3.5. But in the in the second row we have data one two three four five and and we have an outlier here thousand so the mean is one sixty nine and uh, median still remains three point five and that's the reason why this brings me to the to the to the second section of the slide uh, the robust statistics median being robust as as it is it is uh, not getting influenced from the outlier and the mean is uh, considered to be a non-robust statistic since it's it's getting influenced uh, with the outlier so the next thing being the spread so again uh, the median is is somewhere coming from the box plot itself uh, which we had seen before and uh, IQR the interquartile range is from the box plot and hence uh, this being a robust statistic and uh, in a ro non-robust statistic uh, mean is the st standard deviation and the range so range being the computed as a maximum minus minimum uh, so 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 again uh, this is this is considered to be a non robust statistic and standard deviation is uh, computed from uh, the mean itself so standard deviation again uh, being a non robust uh, statistic all right so uh, after getting some good understanding of uh, what mean, uh, median and mode is and about robust statistics, how exactly the um, influence of uh, uh, outliers uh, to mean and median uh, affects, uh, we'll move ahead. Uh, now uh, coming to the last section of, our, uh, of this session, we'll be talking about the introduction to uh, R analytics tool. So, uh, so uh, in an introduction to R analytics tool, first we have to we will be downloading the R software from the mentioned si uh, si site on the slide, and then this is the R interface, the R uh, console, and then uh, in this in this particular data science course, uh, we'll be using R Studio since uh, it is more uh, interactive and user friendly. So to download R Studio, we'll be uh, downloading it from the uh, website as mentioned here. So this is what uh, the R Studio console uh, will look like. So just to give you uh, what exactly the functionalities of this R Studio uh, is. So this region is um, uh, the entire scripting uh, happens in this area wherein you can uh, do uh, do write your codes, do comments, and uh, save your file, and uh, later on you can reuse uh, your file. So this is the entire this is the area where the entire scripting of uh, uh, of the codes happen. The second one being the console. Um, in in console we have the the scripts are being uh, uh, run, and uh, we we see our results uh, in the console itself. The, on the upper right, the third section. In this section, we we can we can actually see uh, the um, the number of observations and variables uh, which are loaded uh, into the R uh, R software. And also in this section, we can import import the the uh, Excel files. Uh, the fourth section here uh, at the right bottom, uh, what it says is. Uh, so uh, we uh, we can download packages in this section and uh, also we can uh, uh, we can view plots uh, in this section itself it also has uh, help uh, help and uh, other tabs like viewer uh, in in this specific uh, tool so uh, once once we will uh, move uh, into our uh, programming session uh, wherein we'll be doing a hands on our programming um, session so in that uh, i'll be i'll be getting into details of um, what exactly each and every each and every tab or uh, um, packages and what are the essential packages which needs to be installed uh, for uh, data science projects uh, will be discussed so next uh, let's move ahead so now 
uh, we'll be we'll be talking about an analytics detective uh, case study so this is uh, nothing but a case study in which uh, we'll be talking about uh, the city of Chicago um, the crime patterns happening in the city of Chicago and we will be using R to actually identify what exactly uh, is happening behind uh, this data so this is a variable description of uh, the data so we have uh, ID uh, that is a unique identifier for each observation the date uh, location description arrest whether or not an arrest was made for that crime uh, domestic whether or not the crime was a domestic crime meaning that it was committed against a family member the beat the area or beat in which the crime occurred district uh, the police district in which the crime occurred the community area the year the year in which the crime occurred and then again the the geographical description that is the latitude and the longitude of where the crime occurred so for this uh, let's move to R so as I as I said um, just a while before importing the data is from here we go here and then from the system we locate the data and then import the data so I have already imported the data into my machine and you can as I said uh, you can see the description uh, right here we have a uh, one uh, one nine one six four one observations and uh, eleven variables so the first question how many uh, rows or let's let's just move on to questions here yeah how many rows of data observations are in the data set so for this what we do is run a function called n row onto the entire data set so I have named this data set as MVT and then I do I, I run a n row on NVT and then uh, I see what exactly how many number of rows do I have so here we have uh, again the, it's the same thing mentioned um, right on the top right corner as well it's, uh, and we are getting the same result after uh, running our code so the second question is how many variables are in the data set so we run a str command so str command is a nothing but structure command for uh, for our data frame that is mvt we do a control enter and uh, with this uh, we'll get to know how many variables do we have so we have 11 variables in our uh, data set moving to the third questions using the max function what is the maximum value of the variable ID so basically we need to find what is the maximum value of a variable ID so we use a max function here and then we give the name of the data set followed by a dollar sign and then the name of the variable so this is what uh, the syntax is to find uh, the details of a specific variable in a data set so you can see uh, right at the bottom here we have uh, the answer for uh, the maximum uh, value of uh, the variable ID next uh, the next question being uh, what is the minimum value of the variable beat so it's 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 in the same way we use the min function instead of max data frame being again uh, MVT it's, it's just one data frame one data set we are using and uh, followed by a dollar sign and then followed by the variable name so with this we get uh, the minimum value of uh, the the that specific variable that is beat so we have 111 so how many observations have value true in the arrest variable so this is this is nothing but uh, the number of crimes for which an arrest was made so that's an interesting thing to know uh, for how many numbers how many number of crimes uh, the arrest was made so we use the function table so table followed by open brackets again the name of the data frame and then uh, a dollar sign followed by uh, the name of the variable so here we get we get the answer we have 15,536 cases in which the arrest was made 
The sixth question, how many observations have a location description value of alley? So again we use the table function followed by name of the data frame then a dollar sign and then the name of the variable. So here we get the list of all the variables and then we need, we need to find um, the specific variable that is alley for which uh, yes so we have 2308 so so 2308 observations have a location description value of uh, alley so with this um, we cover we cover uh, the r programming exercise as well wherein uh, we spoke about uh, what exactly um, a few of the basic uh, exploratory analysis is uh, what we can say that is uh, trying to find out the the overall description of the data and 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 with this i mean fr from here the in in the exploratory analysis we we will also cover things like uh, uh, visualizing the data and trying to see what exactly the skewness is um, uh, part of the histograms and the box plots so these are these are things uh, which will be covered in the data science uh, course provided by great online training uh, for these uh, techniques like uh, the machine learning predictions and uh, the statistical models as well so all right uh, thank you then uh, thank you for listening uh, this particular session uh, do subscribe uh, to our channel uh, right below to get to know more about uh, things happening in the data science space provided by uh, great online training once again thank you all